Okay, Unit 1, Lecture 3B. We're just about there for this lecture, all right? So New England is founded for religious freedom. Um, the first ones to land in New England are the Pilgrims in Plymouth in 1620. They're a group of Puritans, Anglicans, Church of England. They thought the church was still too Catholic. Hadn't been reformed enough. Um, and wanted to separate from it. Okay, we're in the middle of the Reformation. Bring this up in class if you have some questions. All right, the pilgrims, pilgrims came over on the Mayflower, and before they even got off the boat, the men um, gathered and wrote the Mayflower Compact, the promise to respect the laws they made for their community. Puritans are going to come later. All right, they wanted to purify or improve the Church of England, and the Puritans practiced direct democracy direct democracy in town hall meetings and established a coveting community based on the principles of the Mayflower Compact combined with Puritan religious beliefs, okay? And we're going to talk about why direct democracy um, or why the types of democracy formed in different regions um, and, and it has a lot to do with geography. In the South, people were spread out on large farms, on plantations. So, excuse me, they elected representatives to make laws for them. They didn't have the time to travel long distances to participate in democracy, so they elected somebody, usually a wealthy man, who could afford the leisure time to go and represent them. In New England, poor rocky soil led to the development of towns so people could participate directly because they lived close by and they'd have town hall meetings and you could show up in the afternoon. In the middle colonies, we're going to see a blending of both. We're going to see aspects of both direct, direct democracy and representative democracy, okay? We're also going to see a much more religiously diverse region in the middle colonies and a uh, much more economic opportunity there, all right? Lots of different peoples, too. So some things to remember from this first group of lectures, the effects of colonization, all right? Worldwide commercial expansion. Expansion. Commerce equals trade, okay? So trade between continents and goods, ideas, and people. The slave trade will be very important, all right? Um, the long term development of um, representative government, all right? A continuation of our English heritage. Uh, the development of ideas on religious freedom. The loss of land and life for Native Americans, millions of them through disease. The development of a strong idea in private ownership and um, the agricultural economy in the, in the South and Caribbean will lead, will lead to slavery. All right, so those are some big effects of colonization that I want you to be aware of. Um, and I'm hoping to get some uh, discussion on the key concepts, bring these up in class, um, so that you're not waiting till the end of the unit and the writing portion of the test is not such a big surprise. All right, I expect writing on every test. Okay, um, the end of unit one, lecture one.